Welcome back. Now, media giant Nasdaq has experienced a surge in shares following a surprise turn in China's gaming regulations. Regulators unexpectedly withdrew draft uh, rules aimed at controlling video game spending, sparking a rally in Nasdaq shares on the JSE. This unexpected development is, however, seen as a positive sign for Tencent, Nasdaq's major earner, as China, the world's largest online gaming market, appears to be softening its restrictions. Joining us to unravel the expectation, unexpected twist rather in greater detail and what it means for the gaming market is technology correspondent for Business Day, Mudiwa Kavaza. Hello, Mudiwa. Hello, Noel Tanto. How are you? Very well. How are you? Alive, good, well, and thriving. All right. So there were draft regulations with yes. regards to gaming, uh, you know, put out by uh, China. Why? So... Um, you have to think about where China is, uh, the type of government that they have and what they're trying to achieve, the whole national agenda thing. We've seen it with social media. So, for example, um, Chinese company ByteDance, they're the ones who own TikTok. But you'll see that they have restrictions on the way that TikTok is used in China versus in the rest of the world. So, for example, in China, they try by all means to make sure that they're pushing educational content because they are of this uh, opinion as a government that the internet must be used to advance the country's agenda as opposed to being a time waster. Um, so when it comes to social media, that's been the stance. And they've also taken the same stance on things like gaming, right? So, for example, you know, trying to restri uh, restrict, uh, you know, who is using it, you know, on age. Uh, but the most recent proposals were things about uh, making in-app purchases, um, you know, making, you know, giving people alerts to say, are you making a responsible decision with what you're about to do, that type of thing. So um, there's been a crackdown. These were just the latest proposals, but it's been an ongoing narrative in China uh, where they've been looking at video games companies and trying to wrangle them in. So Tencent is the biggest uh, gaming company in the world. So obviously they've taken a huge hit uh, because of that. So anything that smells like good news, uh, and I think this is one of those things, has done well for them. So I mean, uh, how big is that online gaming market globally and maybe and then how much of it sits in China? That's a good one. Uh, I don't have an exact figure. What we do know is that China is the biggest market in the world uh, for gaming. So think about it that you've got Tencent, which is the biggest uh, gaming company in the world, and they're also the big, one of the biggest players in China mm -hmm. you know, as well. So you've got those, those dualities where they're doing well internationally and they're doing well in their, uh, in their home market. Um, I think internationally people might know games such as uh, Fortnite, mm. right? That's actually, you know, one of the things that they are responsible for because not only do they have uh, big games themselves, such as PUBG, uh, they also own big studios oh. like Epic Games, which, you know, is the developer of Fortnite. So Tencent is a huge player in this market. That's interesting, would you have, because also what we are seeing, I don't know if erratic, sporadic, these are the words to yeah. use here, with the, the proposed legislation and all the regulations and then that being pulled back. Markets obviously uh, welcoming this, but it also still speaks to an uncertain environment. Uncertain, sure, but I don't think erratic is the right word. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that is because, once again, you need to think about the Chinese national government. What are they trying to do? Where have they been going? And for the last couple of years, I'm going to call it two, maybe three years, there's been a huge crackdown across tech in China, right? Not only in gaming, but across. Think Jack, uh, think Jack Ma and Alibaba, the breakup of Ant Group, you know, all of that stuff. They've really been doing a lot of work to wrangle in um, the, the Chinese tech companies. So I don't think erratic is the word. This is a concerted and deliberate effort, you know, to structure the market the way that they want to and to make sure that these uh, tech companies are serving, you know, the, the national agenda in the way that they want to. I think from a market point of view, why it's seen as erratic is simply because when the Chinese government decides to do something, they do it. Right. It's different from other places where they might go out, do cons uh, consensus, uh, yeah, yeah. consensus gathering and all of that stuff. They just do it. So their firmness and I, I guess the decisiveness is seen as erratic because that's not how things typically work in places like the West. You would have had a year 
and you have congressional hearings. You take the tech leaders, you know, to Congress and to the Senate. They testify. After a while, you investigate, and then you might put. But in this case, they just, you know, uh, tell you this is what we're about to do. Here's the amount of time you need to prepare, and it's about to happen. So um, I think we're going to... I don't know whether we can safely say that they are done, but for now, because I think that's the piece of th this week's news that um, hasn't been explored that much. It's not that the regulator has said that we're, we've taken down mm. the proposals. It's simply that we have, they removed the proposals from their website mm -hmm. and people read into that to say that, you know, perhaps this means that there's been an about turn. There has been no official word that has come from them. So some corners of the market are thinking maybe this is a chance to go back and redraft the proposals and we may see new ones, you know, being put up. Or maybe this is just a silent withdrawal. I mean, that's the thing. I was about to ask you why. Why have they uh, decided, uh, you know, to remove the regulations mm -hmm. from the website? But of course, that means that even though we are seeing this rally, uh, you know, with a 10 cents and nice and process welcoming it uh, here in Johannesburg with yeah. the JSC, if uh, the regulations should come back looking slightly different, and they could, uh, could that then result in a sell off? It could, uh, definitely. And I say that just based on history. Right. I'm not a market expert from that point of view, but history has taught us that whenever the, the government does something, there's usually an immediate reaction in the market. Take this, for example. There isn't even an official word. It's simply people looking, oh, the regulations are gone. You know, market uh, rises. Just before we came on, I was actually checking. Tencent is up, you know, ended the day up, I think, over 3% today, mm -hmm. which means that I, th I saw that, you know, NASPAS is about 1% up. We're likely going to have another positive day in the market. So if there is a turn, I do think we might see some negativity. All we hope for is that if there is a turn, that the negativity won't get rid of the gains. Mm. Because, for example, NASPA's share price is up, I think, about 10% um, over the last five or six days. Right. So you just hope that if in a situation where there is, they bring back these regulations, that they don't completely lose that 10% gain that they've had. Well, all we can do is watch Madura. Thank you for joining us. A very interesting development there. That was technology correspondent for Business Day, Madura Gabaza.